and trying to get another year of eligibility for one of his players, Nebraska head coach Matt Rule is out of his dang mind as he tries unsuccessfully to pin things on Michigan and the Connor Stallion saga. We're going to get into his comments, why it's just obviously absolutely absurd. Let's get into it on this episode of Locked On Wolverines. You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Tuesday. We are back and doing it. Locked On Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. I'm your man on the ground, Isaiah Hole, publisher of Wolverines Wire through USA Today Sports Media Group. And uh, I don't know why I didn't do this. The I'm still getting used to having uh, <laughs> having the technology I have. So anyway, um, Matt Rule appeared uh, in his press conference and he's lobbying for uh, for one of his players to get an extra year of eligibility. And in doing so, he takes a crack at Michigan, uh, uh, trying to make sure that Deshaun Singleton, who is otherwise in his final year of college football, uh, he's trying to to basically throw Michigan under the bus to help himself. Right, Michigan also gets your ratings and going up against them in one way or another. Like, it, it's it's absolutely absurd what has been going on uh, here with this. So let me get to, to his quote. He says, "Obviously, everything that happened against Michigan last year seems like there's some cloak of you know whatever." Deshaun Singleton got cracked on a run play. Did they know it was a run play? Is that game going to count in a couple years? I thought he shouldn't get penalized for one play in a game. That's in my mind not even a real game. But the NCAA disagreed. I almost don't even need to spend the seven or eight minutes on this. I basically can spend 30 seconds. Did Michigan know it was a run play? Well, considering that Deshaun Singleton is a safety and he got hurt on Nebraska defense while Michigan was on offense, I'd venture to guess that Michigan probably knew it was a run play because they were on offense. Like how absolutely absurd do you have to be to even conjure up something like that, right? Like you're trying to gain sympathy and all of this. I get it. You're trying to, again, get the torch and pitchforks out, all of that kind of stuff. But like, this is like, keep Michigan's name out your mouth because it's very clear Connor Stallions had nothing to do with that. Did Michigan know it was a run play? Of course they knew it was a run play because they were the ones calling the run play. What are we doing here? We're a year past all of this. It's, that game is a year ago in the rear view. Michigan won that game, what, 52-7 to seven or whatever it was, 49-7? to seven? I don't even remember. All I know is that Nebraska couldn't do anything, and all it takes is looking at what kind of plays did Michigan make. J.J. McCarthy throwing to Roman Wilson. After, J.J. McCarthy scrambles, right? Pressure gets through. Did, did they know that Michigan was calling a pass play on that? Right, because the pressure seemed really good. J.J. McCarthy scrambles out, finds Roman Wilson in the end zone where he pins it up against a Nebraska player's helmet. I've seen Nebraska people trying to argue this online. It's absolutely absurd. Uh, What what also happened? Kind of similar. J.J. McCarthy escapes the pocket, finds Roman Wilson in the back of the end zone after uh, Wilson runs a scram, you know, basically a scramble drill. To, to go up at that point, I think it was 21 to, to zero. But uh, what else happened? The second touchdown, Kalel Mullings, like a fourth and one or a third and one, one or whatever that was. Gets through the line of scrimmage. They couldn't tackle him. There were bodies there. Did Michigan know they were calling a run play on that one? It is absolutely asinine that like I understand have your players back, but don't throw other teams under the bus. And like this whole like NCAA disagreed. It's not even a real game getting penalized for one game. I mean, I, here's the thing. If he played in one game and that happened to be against Michigan, right? That was the fifth game of the season. I agree. He shouldn't be penalized getting hurt on the first uh, play of the game. A hundred percent agree with that. Now I I'm with you. If you want to, if you want to make that argument, but to basically say, well, he should be able to play because Michigan was cheating. Sorry, cheating! Now that I can do the voice again. 
that is the most absolutely ridiculous argument that I've heard. Uh, it, it's, it's very clear that Nebraska was not in the same stratosphere as Michigan. Nebraska continues to struggle. How many games have they been fighting for bowl eligibility? It, doesn't, it didn't stop with Scott Frost. It's also been the Matt Rule administration. They can't seem to get that sixth win. They got destroyed by Indiana. What did Indiana know? Right? Were they cheating as well? Michigan won a national championship uh, in more than half the season. They didn't have Connor Stallions. They didn't have Jim Harbaugh for the final three games of the regular season. They played Ohio State, Penn State, Alabama, and Washington, and they won all those games. You, Nebraska, by the way, some of those, they didn't have Jim Harbaugh, right? (laughs) So let's just take a look at what you are. Stop casting stones. And I have nothing else. I don't know what else to say about it, but that's the the top story today. So we had to at least discuss it because it is the most beyond absurd thing I think I've ever heard from a head coach the out and I was going to say besides, but like that's on the same par as Alan Haller, the AD of MSU saying like, like maybe we should cancel the game due to player safety, right? This is, and here's the thing as a head coach, he knows all about sign stealing and what it is and what it isn't. I don't, but now I don't believe that Nebraska was included. Let, let's go back to what Connor said to me last year. See if I can find this. I, I may or may not be able to. Um, let's see. October of last year. Um, I don't know if I can. Yeah, it looks like I, I deleted my note here that uh, Connor had, had written about the those who... Uh, oh, man. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm not finding I'm not finding what I was hoping to find, but the 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 teams that got involved in the uh the sign stealing and all of that. Um it's it's in my notes somewhere, but I probably opened it at some point and it went to a different month, so it's not exactly easy to find here, but um nonetheless, I Nebraska was one that I know did some if I recall did some trading. They weren't oblivious to it, but they weren't necessarily a massive participator. Um like tend to your own house, man, is all is kind of my whole point. Just tend to your own house because you've got bigger problems. I understand you want your guy eligible. Michigan has nothing to do with it. it your game, the game happened to be against Michigan. Did Michigan know it was a run play? Absolutely. They knew it was a run play because they're the one who called the play. Like there was ways that if you really wanted to throw shade, you could have found a way to do it. That wasn't the right way. That wasn't the right uh, play even. So it's beyond absurdity here that that's uh, that's the case. All right, let's continue on. I want to talk about some of the things that Sharon Moore discussed in his uh, weekly press conference yesterday. We didn't get to any of that because we spent the whole show talking about Bryce Underwood. So let's get to some of Sharon Moore's comments here in just a moment. But before we do, Locked On Wolverines fans, time to listen up. You need to download the new Roy app. You've heard us talk about Roy this season, how they're revolutionizing NIL and the industry that it is. Roy allows you, the fan, to get to have a say in who gets that NIL money. And here's what I absolutely love about Roy. You get your money back if that player transfers. Roy is helping us keep Michigan football intact. And it's actually good for the game long term. Much like, uh, you know, we don't have a player of the week this, uh, this week because it's, uh, they didn't have a game. But much like the play of Mason Graham, who was our player of the week last week. Uh, or Colston Loveland, who's been an absolute beast. You can show your support for one of those guys by depositing a little appreciation into that player's account. To do that, download the Roy app. And you can see what that logo looks like if you're watching on YouTube. You can go to joinroy.com. So download the Roy app or go to joinroy.com today. Use the promo code locked on. Every athlete from every team is there. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited. Go to joinroy.com for full terms. Roy, support the players. Change the game. All right, we're going to continue on here in just a moment. But before we do, listen, there's this, you've got two football games left. You've got tons of basketball games. The best way to get in the door is with game time. Game time has a new feature called game time picks that helps you make getting tickets easier to see your favorite teams play live. 
Game Times Picks filters out all the fluff to show you only the incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. With their super deal, all of their curated deals, their, their views from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what you're going to be looking at. So many great things about the Game Time experience. With their all-in pricing, toggling the feature allows you to see the total up front so there's no surprise fees at checkout. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time Picks. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On College for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account and redeem the code Locked On College for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's Game Time. All right, let's continue on as I move screens here. I'm, just, I'm playing around for the most part here with uh, having a screen above the camera now. Um, all right. Lots of uh, interesting things that came out of the Sharon Moore press conference earlier in the week, as in yesterday. Uh, so I am excited still about the recruiting aspect. So let's talk a little bit about what he had to say about that, because one of the things that he was asked about is, Michigan, it's still a transformational or over transactional. Obviously, there's these rumors that you guys are paying everything. So there's a two part uh, question that I'm going to read you what he had to say. So when it comes to NIL, he says it's part of football now, right? NIL is part of recruiting and it's uh, so it's been a huge piece of it. We're just continuing to strive to get the best players that fit us and the best players we can. And we're getting the support that we need. And then he was asked, is transformational over transactional still a pitch? And he says, I mean, I think it has to. I think that's just a part of it because it's just a part of college football and recruiting now. So you still have to have the attitude that you want to come to Michigan to be transformed into something bigger than just yourself. And for us, it's the support you're going to get from the boost. It is, it, it's the support you're going to get from the boosters. It isn't always just financial. It's putting guys in a position, whether it's internships or different things, to make sure you can have a goal that you want to do. And football is not here forever. What can we do to help you accomplish that goal? So that support is a big piece of it, too. So, um... I love that. And I do agree, like, it still has to be transformational over transactional, even though that there is now much more of a transactional uh, action involved in this. I was talking to someone uh, inside the building there, and, uh, like, we, we were having this conversation about what, what good teams look like in college football. And one of the, the, the kind of common denominator was the culture obviously, uh, which is what you saw. But it also, and this is kind of where I would love to see uh, Sharon get a little bit more to uh, personally, where it's the head coach is much more the CEO. And that's what we used to see with Jim Harbaugh in the successful years. That was one of the big changes that happened was Harbaugh stopped meddling with the offense in the ways that he was and took his hands off. Now, I think Sharon is trying to do that in a lot of ways. And so in some ways, for this year, he needs to get his hands back on the offense more than it is. He needs to steady the rudder and uh, actually start directing the ship more than he has been. Uh, so th this isn't a knock on Sharon at all. But I think that he needs to be able to have a little bit more of a trust level than he currently would have, I believe, based off of the struggles that the team has had so far this year. So um, I think that that's one of the big things is being able to establish the culture from the top down where, you know, Sharon would essentially be, here is the direction we're going to move in, and everyone else is going to do their job to steer the ship in the right direction. If we hit a storm, I have full trust in them to be able to handle it, uh, and we're going to go ahead and do that. And when it comes to getting new crew members uh, and uh, new sailors, whatever it is, uh, I'm going to be the one to, to make those decisions. I'm going to be the one to help uh, get those guys in, right? So that's obviously a uh, when I'm talking about staff members as well as recruits. Um, I, I think that they are doing a good job of that, despite Michigan's kind of issues so far this year. It's just that some things aren't working, and obviously they're going to need off-season changes. There's not going to be a way to fix this in season. I thought that they were on path. I, I'm, I'm going to beat this dead horse. I thought they were on path with Alex Orgy being the quarterback, less because of Orgy. I do think that Orgy has a lot of talent, and I think you could have made him into Jalen Milrow light if you would have stuck with it. But I thought that they they did things really well against USC. They did things okay against Minnesota, and then they pulled the rug out from under him against Washington. Um, and I thought that a lot of the strategy in that game obviously uh, 
well, far away from what the strategy was the weeks beforehand, okay? So uh, I, I, I think that that was, and let me, let me rephrase for those who don't watch or listen to the show regularly. That's why I bring this up again, is because Kurt Campbell was forced to do things differently than he wanted to, and I thought that made him better, right? So that's a big thing. And then taking him out of the equation, giving it like, okay, now I got a passer. It's just they become a team that is not designed to be the type of offense, have the type of offense that Kirk Campbell clearly wants to do. So um, that's a problem. Uh, from a recruiting standpoint, it's similar. You need to have guys who are all in and pulling in the same direction. I've talked about the 17, 18, 19 classes uh, not necessarily classes, but teams and how they weren't always going in the same direction. There were a lot of me first guys instead of team first guys in there. Not everyone's pulling in the same direction. I think that they're still recruiting guys that understand like, okay, here is the directive. And part of having that directive is also understanding that Michigan isn't tech, isn't, isn't a football factory in the traditional sense, right? That it is a school that is going to give you a lot more than you give it in the end. And I think that that is a cell that is continuing to go. And I think that like when I talk to people who have been around some of these recruits that are committed, the Jasper Parkers of the world, uh, the uh, um, Nathaniel Owusu Boateng, he's not committed, but I'm just saying like those types of guys, they get it. They get what Michigan offers, right? They, that it's, it's more than football. The 40, 40 years over four type of mentality, they come in with that. And yes, you do risk upsetting the apple cart when you are offering uh, Bryce Underwood a substantial amount of money. But the pitch also, even there, I would imagine has to still be transformational over transactional, even as they engage in the transaction. Because if you have a guy that comes in, that's a lot of money, and he's, but he's going to upset the apple cart as far as culture, which I don't believe is the case for Bryce Underwood. I think he is very much a team guy based off of what I've heard coming out of Belleville that it that that's still some, something that works but if you get a guy that's going to be essentially early career willie beeman i should say early starter willie beeman uh, if you get my any given sunday reference that is a problem right a guy that's all about what am i going to do what are my stats what you know am i getting paid am i getting the credit i deserve you know i'm the i'm the star all of you you can bow down to what i'm doing i don't think that michigan's doing that so um I think that that's, that's a good mentality for Sharon Moore to have. And I think that that's obviously evidence of the guys that he's been mentored by himself. So I think that that's uh, interesting. And I understand you look at all the, the NIL deals that are starting to come to the surface here late in the 2025 cycle. And uh, it, it will make you question. Certainly the rival fans want all of you to question uh, Michigan's, uh, you know, because obviously it was the, you know, developed, not bought. Well, it's college football in the current status quo. There's a lot of people who are not wanting to come along with that inside the Michigan fan base. But like if you you're going to get left behind, if everyone else is on board, you have to still be on board and you have to just find different ways to do it. Uh, so I think that uh, Michigan's in a good spot. Uh, they're still working the NIL for the existing players. They're trying to figure things out for uh, the recruits all the way across the board, not just Bryce Underwood. Remember the Bryce Underwood money I've been told is outside of the funds that they had set up, the champion circle and state and mains and all of the collective funds that have been raised, right? So uh, they can find ways to, uh, to entice guys uh, competitively in that light. But um, I think that still the pitch has to be like, no matter what we pay you, if it's a dollar or if it's, $50 million, which is what they're paying. No, I'm just kidding. They're not. <laughs> but let's just say like, you know, someone's getting an insane amount that is just like a, basically a, akin to what the uh, football program's revenue is. They all still have to have the same direction. And that is like kind of like Sharon Moore talking about leadership and all of that stuff that he said back all the way at his uh, introductory press conference as a head coach. So that's good to see that he's still got that mentality. All right, we're going to continue on, and we're going to do so here in just a moment. But before we do, I love a great deal as much as the next guy, but I'm not going to crawl through a bed of hot coals. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I might for uh, Bryce Underwood to Michigan, but certainly uh, not for anything else. Just to save a few bucks, 
it's got to be easy. No hoops, no BS. So when Mint Mobile said it was easy to get wireless for $15 a month with the purchase of a three-month plan, I called them on it. Turns out it's really that easy to get it wireless for $15 a month. The longest part of the process was the time I spent on old waiting to break up with my old provider. It is so easy to make that switch. So to get started, go to mintmobile.com slash college. There you'll see that right now, a three month that all three month plans are only fifteen dollars a month, including the unlimited plan. All plans come with high speed data and unlimited talk and text delivered on the nation's largest five G network. You can use your old phone, your own phone, old phone, whatever it is, with any Mint Mobile plan, and bring your phone number along with all of your existing contacts. Find out how easy it is to switch to Mint Mobile and get three months of premium wireless service for fifteen bucks a month. So to get this new customer offer. And your new three-month premium wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash college. That's mintmobile.com slash college. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash college. $45 upfront payment required, equivalent to $15 a month. New customers on, on first three-month plan only. Speed slower than 40 gigs on unlimited plan. Uh, additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. All right, let's uh, finish out continuing to talk about Sharon Moore. Uh, some of the things that he had to say in his Monday press conference. My big takeaway is there. Um, uh, here's one of the things that I think is really cool. And this is why, like, some people I, I know after the Indiana game were, were being, like I like to say, very undued. And they're saying a bunch of stuff. I think people have calmed down a little bit now. But one of the things that you can see when you watch this team is the fact that they have not quit. And that is a sign of good leadership, good coaching. We'll see, right? Like that it, it's going to take more than a one year experiment to really tell with as much turnover as Michigan had, but certainly good leadership. They have had that without a doubt. So, uh, asked besides trying to win, what are you looking for the most out of the team this week? Sharon says that passion, that fire we saw in the second half of Indiana, especially from the defensive guys. They played an incredible second half and offensively thought we could have played better in attacking and fixing those things. I just want to see them have fun. This game is about having fun, and there's so many negative things that people are trying to bring you down in this world. And at the end of the day, these are kids. I love these kids. Win, lose, or draw. They're like our kids. They're my kids. They're Michigan's players. They're our team. I want to see them go out and have that competitive fire and have fun. Go and execute at a high level and go and win 100%, but I want to go see them have fun this weekend. Uh, and I, I, I think that that is an important part of it, right? Like a team, you saw that in the last three years as teams that they were having fun, especially last year's team. That, that was a team that was having more fun than any of the others, right? Like, uh, I mean, I thought that they were having fun all three years and you saw that with like jump around and the, we make their stadium, our stadium and all that kind of stuff. They haven't really been able to do that this year, right? Cause, uh, they've, uh, they've lost all their road games, right? <laughs> So, um, but, uh, they, they've won most of their home games, not all they've lost a couple, but nonetheless, um, I think that, uh, you've seen that and that's, that's an important to, thing to instill because when it becomes strictly business, especially because it is becoming more business-like as a sport, it's important to remind the kids why they're there to begin with. Like it should be fun and it shouldn't be. Um, well, like you saw at LSU on, on Saturday, right? That's not what college football should be. Uh, so it should be more of like, okay, you're, you, you know, they, they should certainly feel it if they're not doing good, but that doesn't mean that they should also, um, hate life too, right? Like it's, it's because you can't have that pressure and expect to do well, but really the most important thing is, is that they don't, they haven't quit. I think you do see kind of a backhanded offensive uh, uh, kind of note there about like you like to see them do better and fix those things. I mean, it, that's obvious, but it just does, you know, compared to the defense, which has had struggles as well, but certainly has been more consistent of the two units. Uh, I think that tells you a little bit about the mentality right now in Ann Arbor. So um, I like where they're headed still. Um, recruiting is continuing to be really exciting. And I think that uh, this, this uh, very well has the ability to shape up to be a fun week. We'll see. Um, but uh, it's, uh, I, I think that uh, as long as he keeps those two mentalities that I just gave you, 
the culture with the, you know, the idea of recruiting as well as inside the building, as well as you've got players that are still fighting for their head coach. You still have Colston Loveland, Mason Graham, Kenneth Grant, all, you know, all playing. Um, we'll see about Will Johnson, right? Like he, he's supposed to play at some point. I don't know about this week or in the future. Next question is just, he was asked about Will. He said he's still working through it. We'll see what happens if we go through this week. I, I would venture to guess we'll see Will by Ohio State, but you know, you never know. Um, bowl game, you know, that's going to be a different animal and they're not playing for anything. But um, I think that there's a lot to really like about the direction of this team. It might not be as fun as it was in the 21 through 23. Uh, that was a different direction led by an established head coach who might be the best coach in all of football. So Sharon's got to find his way. I think he has the right mentality. He says he talks to Jim Harbaugh at least once a week to, for guidance as well as Bob Stoops and some others. Um, I think that that's important as well is that he continues to seek out uh, – Answers. John Harbaugh, he also speaks to. Uh, seek out answers where you don't have them and uh, continue to improve your team. And I think that uh, if everything goes the way that I, I, I think they're going to try to go, this will be a dramatically different looking team next year. And that's, you know, kind of a benefit to being in the new transfer portal uh, NIL era of college football is that you can, you can turn on a dime. Look at Indiana. Turn down a dime. I personally love to see that. Who would have ever thought Indiana being like a, a team that could actually go and do some damage. Anyway, that's going to do it for us today. We'll be back on Wednesday and uh, we will continue to look forward to the Northwestern game. Ohio state is but a week and a half away, which is wild. And uh, certainly a lot of us are counting down to the end of the season. It's been a weird season for me. I was sick for a whole month in between. I, I used to always get sick in October and then only the last couple of years I got start, uh, I think 2019, I started getting sick in November and des- end of November, early December, usually early December. I'll, I think all three years of the big 10 championship, I was coming down with something. Um, but in 2019, it was the same, same deal, but I used to always get sick in October, but it'd be like a week and that was it. So being, having pneumonia for a month plus different, different deal. Feels like it didn't have a season to some degree. Anyway, I'm just speaking my mind now. Anyway, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Peace.